This video is for chemistry class, chapter three, video number three on ions. At the end of watching this video, you should be able to define the word ion and be able to predict how many protons, neutrons, and electrons an ion would have. You should have already watched the video on subatomic particles, so you should be able to figure out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons an atom has. And we cover this in ninth grade too, so you might see this as being familiar because in ninth grade physical science, you learn how to do this very same thing. Now, a, an ion is any particle, usually an element, but it can be a group of elements, that he have a positive or a negative charge. And they're formed by gaining or losing electrons. Now this part is hard for some students to remember, so it's important that you write this down. If you remember that electrons are negative and you gain more negatives, you will now have a negative charge. So negative ions have been formed by gaining electrons and positive ions have been formed by losing them. For some students that's hard to remember because it seems like opposites, but you have to remember that what you're gaining and losing are negatively charged particles. So if you gain more negatives, you're going to become negative. If you lose some negatives, you're going to become positive as a result. The number of protons in an atom will never ever change. So if you look up the element number sodium, or el element sodium, which is number 11, we know that sodium, if you look at its atomic number, should have 11 protons. And we're used to saying that as an atom, it is neutral, which means it also has 11 electrons. Now sodium, if it's going to form an ion, will lose some of these electrons. And if it loses electrons, it becomes positively charged. And we're going to work through how that happens in just a minute. So the number of protons that an element has will never, ever change. So if I'm talking about an element and I say it's oxygen, Oxygen's always going to have eight protons. Carbon is always going to have six protons. That never, ever changes. But when the number of electrons change, your protons will no longer equal your electrons. And so you will have either a positive charge or a negative charge, depending on what's there in the greater quantity. Now, we write the symbols for ions with either a plus or a minus sign in the upper right-hand corner. And we use a number to show how positive or how negative they are. So for example, let's look at hydrogen. This symbol right here is the symbol for the hydrogen ion, okay? This is the hydrogen ion. And you know it's an ion because of this plus one charge right here. Now, if you look at your periodic table, I want you to figure out what the atomic number of hydrogen normally is. And this is a pretty easy one because it's the first one on your periodic table. Normally, we would look at the periodic table and the biggest number in the box is going to be your atomic number. So for hydrogen, its atomic number is one. That means it has one proton. And we would have said that it also had one electron. But we see here that this symbol is telling us that it is positive. Positive means that it has lost an electron. So positive means that it's lost. And the one means that it lost one electron. So if it used to have one, now it has zero. So the hydrogen ion has one proton and zero electrons. Now if we move on to the next one, oxygen is listed. And we would say this is the oxygen ion, and we'll have another name for it later in the year, but for that, for now, this is good. I want you to look up the atomic number for oxygen. Find it on your periodic table, and when you look at it, you see that the biggest number in the box is eight. That means its atomic number is eight, and it has eight protons. Now, we would normally say that it also would have had eight electrons, but you look at this charge. The charge means it's gained some electrons. We know that it means it's gained them because the charge is negative. We've gained electrons when we have a negative charge. And in this case, how many did we gain? Well, you look at the charge, and since it's a two, we would say that we've gained two electrons. So if we had eight, and we gained two more, 
we now have a total of 10 electrons in that ion. And they're not, it's not neutral anymore because you have more negatives than you do positives. Now we have a name for these kinds of ions. The two types of ions, positive ions are called cations and negative anions are called, or negative ions are called anions. Now, I have a way to help you remember these words. For the word cation, the little trick that I would give you is picture a cat, okay? So draw yourself a little cat face. And the cat is how you're going to remember this. And we want to remember that it's positive. So for his eyes, I'm going to draw a little positive signs for his eyes. Now, that looks like he's not a longer, or no longer with us, but that's a good way of remembering it. And the other way for anion, if you look at the word anion, it's sort of close to the word onion. One letter off. And with an anion, um, or with an onion, when you cut it, you cry. So we're going to draw for the eyes on this when you're cutting an onion. I want you to remember that you cry. And when you cry, your eyes close and you have tears that come out of them. So hopefully that helps you remember the words. If not, if that doesn't help you at all, then you got to memorize them another way. Um, now we're going to practice this. So for example one, we're going we're gonna to need your periodic tables to do this. So if you don't have your periodic table ready right now, pause the video and get one. And we're going to look at nitrogen. Now, find its atomic number on the periodic table. You should find that it has an atomic number of seven. That means it has seven protons. Now, if you look at the charge in the upper right-hand corner, you see that it is a negative three. Ask yourself, negative, did it gain or lose electrons? Okay, well, because it's negative, it gained electrons. And how many did it gain? The charge tells us that it's a three, so it gained three. So if it originally had had seven, three more makes it 10. Now with nitrogen, you can look at its atomic mass and it works out to be 14.01. And since no number of neutrons was provided for us, we're gonna take this number and round it to the nearest whole number. So it has seven neutrons, excuse me, an atomic number of seven, but a mass number of 14. And if you remember writing the symbol, this is the protons, and the neutrons together, and this is just the proton. So if you subtract, you should be able to figure out the number of neutrons. 14 minus 7 is 7. We're going to practice that again with calcium this time. Now I want you to find the element calcium on your periodic table. It's element number 20, and that means it has 20 protons. Now if it had 20 protons, it used to also have 20 electrons. Now this positive charge tells us that it lost electrons and it lost the two, tells us that it lost two of them. So if it used to have 20 and it lost two, now it only has 18. Since no number of neutrons is given for us, we're gonna look at our atomic mass of calcium. And when you find it on the periodic table, you should see that it's about 40.08. So 40 is the number we're gonna round it to. We're gonna rewrite the symbol we're going to put the mass number at the top, which remind, remind yourselves that's protons and the neutrons together. And the atomic number, which was 20, is just the protons. So if we take 40 minus 20, that gives us 20 neutrons. So you now have a learning check to do on your video. So don't forget to do the learning check right now. Good luck.